$500 for Let's Fall Standard. That makes me want to join <laughs> the Light Music Club. As a band dynamics instructor for church worship teams, it's my job to be analytical about the way a band performs. As such, I have an occupational hazard when I watch band performances on screen. In today's video featuring the anime k -On, let's talk about something you'll encounter or have gone through yourself. Conquering the learning curve. Fair warning, the following clips contain spoilers, so if you haven't watched the anime, now's the time to stop the video and watch it before continuing on. Okay, let's see what we have. Okay, it's a three-piece band, bass, drums, and piano, like every children's church ministry band ever. Tuning up sounds One, legit. Two, three, Classic song. Love me tender. The drums and bass are locked in quite tightly, which is great. And what is it with the beginner bands and those drum rolls? Yeah, you know what this sounds like? It's like those toy keyboards with a backing track section and this is 8-beat rock song number one. Yui is objectively correct in her assessment of the band in their current state. I'd like to go back and make an observation about Ritsu the drummer and Mio the bassist, who I think have been playing together longer before Tsumugi the Sumugi. Ayo, how do you pronounce the name? Sumugi. Sumugi the keyboardist joined the band. Please correct me if I'm mistaken. It happens at the turnaround. That's quite cool that a beginner band can do that, having the bass and drums sync like that. Mio must have seen that Ritsu was going to do that one drum fill and accent it together. Additionally, because there's a very light melodic layer, Mio can also chime in to play fill-ins with melodic voice leading, which happens right here. Evidence that Mio is probably the most talented of the three here in a band context. This is important. Just because someone can play amazingly as a soloist doesn't mean they automatically play well in a band. This is the case with Tsumugi. Sumugi. I'm just gonna say her name and I'll just use the one recording that sounds correct. Sumugi, who I understand is an award-winning pianist. I'm not getting that sense that she's an amazing pianist from this sample. This is the task ahead. Getting people of various abilities and affinities for band playing to gel well together. I have three points to make, so let's get to the first one. Number one, resource them well. Nice. So many guitars. I like how they're Paul Gilbert signature guitars at the back. This guitar is cute. <laughs> of course, the visual appeal is quite important for a guitar. She's got expensive taste, doesn't she? Yep, that's every student's reaction when it comes to encountering an expensive guitar for the first time. Oh yeah, yeah. Going in every single day to look at the same instrument. Yep, I never got the chance to be that naggy with a haggling for a price. What's gonna happen here? <laughs> of course, only in an anime is one of the main characters super rich and the parents own the business. $500 for Let's Fall Standard! <laughs> that makes me want to join <laughs> the Light Music Club. I, I don't even have to play, just make me the coffee boy and just give me the Les Paul standard for $500, please. We may not have friends whose parents own the music shop as part of a business conglomerate, but if we were going to be honest, we have adequate church budgets that can allocate more resources to youth and children's ministry. I know it's a long shot, but if any of you watching are in a position to make a difference in your church executive councils or leadership committees, 
I implore you, don't neglect the equipment budget of your youth and children's ministry. I'm not saying we should go out and sponsor $2,500 Les Paul standards, but don't think that $100 starter guitars are going to sustain the interest of your young players. A $100 guitar won't sound great because of cheap pickups, it probably has horrible action, and more importantly, it won't stay in tune long enough to last through a song. The issues go down exponentially with a $500 guitar and even more with a $1,000 guitar. Conversely, the inspiration to continue practicing comes by much easier beyond the budget starter guitar. My Yamaha AES-820 was a giant step up from my starter EG-303 guitar. Whereas I was clocking in two hours of practice a day, once I got this guitar, my practice time skyrocketed. At one point in time, especially after exams, I was practicing 12 hours a day. I know I've said that gear doesn't matter, but for a beginner, I think it does play a part in sustaining and even increasing interest and motivation to practice. Church, let's resource our youth well. Number two, find seasoned mentors. Ooh, what's happening? She's being oddly knowledgeable about the Les Paul. A clear pull off the left hand and not with the fretting hand. I think she can play. What's gonna happen? Oh, the glasses will come off. Something's about to go down. <laughs> nice. Okay, that shouldn't be possible with teeth playing. I should know. I've tried it before and it's nowhere near that fast. What's the gentle and demure ones there for while wow, streak with them, huh? Case in point, I'm an Asian nerd and I was in an extra bank cover band, so this is totally relatable. More to the point, that precision in shredding and tapping is evidence of someone who's been around the block for a while. It speaks of experience and certainly Miss Sawako shares that experience with the band as their mentor from this point on. Church, where are your seasoned mentors for the youth and children's ministry teams? These mentors don't need to shred. They can help our younger, inexperienced musicians with various other aspects of band playing that is better caught than taught like navigating a chord chart, setting up equipment, teaching them to properly coil cables is an essential skill, as well as to avoid these situations. <laughs> Never underestimate the power of having skilled and seasoned mentors around. Maybe they can come down for the rehearsals, maybe they can play one of the instruments, I think it's one of the key reasons why the band goes from sounding like this to sounding like this. Number three, recruit and retain talented members. I'm always a little aware of Asians saying they're novices and we're guilty of false humility all the time. What are the chances that this new girl will be at Yui's level? <laughs> of course the new girl is going to be Jimmy Page incarnate. See what I mean? False humility, people. <laughs> False humility. <laughs> the horse is out of the barn, isn't it? She's gotta keep up the act now. Fun fact, I believe that picture of Led Zeppelin is taken from the 1975 Earl's Court concerts and with the magic of editing, I'll find out if I was right. Azusa has given me hope that my children, particularly my eldest Claire, will have the natural affinity for music since she's been exposed to it since birth. Is it a case of nature versus nurture? I think it could be a mixture of both. Azusa also reminds me of the one kid in youth group who is the most musically talented and is the sort who will take musicianship seriously. That would be the kind who will come to rehearsal having memorized the music, probably know how to play the other musicians' parts, can improvise, and can transpose songs in their head. It's an amazing experience to have this caliber of musician on your team. Recruiting the talented kid is the easy part. Retaining the talented kid is going to be hard. This is where I think providing some creative outlets will greatly help. 
involved this kid in the musically creative decisions for the band, including arrangement, chord choices, instrumentals, etc. Involve him in preparing chord charts and training younger musicians. Just like having a skilled mentor around is inspiring, a fellow skilled musician can be an equally galvanizing force on the team. So in summary, the band in K-On has a long road ahead, even longer if they want to play at the Budokan. <laughs> which is also my pipeline dream by the way. I see parallels with youth and children's ministry worship teams where they're still trying to conquer the learning curve. I believe there are three ways to accelerate the learning process. Providing good resources, finding them seasoned mentors, and recruiting skilled members. In time, the band will grow into a sound that they can call their own. And who knows, maybe they'll be as colorful and energetic as Hokago Tea Time. That's it for me. Thanks for watching this video. Here on my channel, I'm committed to helping you get the best tour out of your gear as well as playing your best for the Sunday service. If you're a worship musician on the same journey, consider liking, subscribing, hitting that bell icon, and sharing this video with someone whom you know could benefit and enjoy. This is part of a video series called Worship Guitarist Reacts, and it's a continually evolving playlist once I receive feedback on which anime or band series you'd like me to cover. If you have a video idea, please feel free to use the Google form in the description box below. Check out the attached playlist, and I'll see you there. Until next time, I'm Justin, and I'm all about worship guitar.